my goal is really to 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 take people set them up for success on their first exam and so after this first exam's done they know what they need to do to re- finish the remaining episode 130 this is the business of architecture Welcome back, Architect Nation. This is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for running a profitable and impactful architecture practice. If you believe that it's possible to make money and do good, then this is the show for you. If you aren't already on the Business of Architecture email list, make sure you claim your free account on businessofarchitecture.com by clicking the green Join Today button. I'm your host, Enix Sears. Today's show is sponsored by BQE Software, the makers of ArchiOffice. ArchiOffice is the office and project management software built with the needs of architects in mind. And for a limited time, startup firms can get two free seats of ArchiOffice for a year. Go check it out at ArchiOffice.com. Now, there's one other thing I want to let you know about. If you listen to podcasts, make sure you go subscribe to ArchiSpeak. You can find it on iTunes or visit ArcaSpeakPodcast.com. ArcaSpeak is a casual conversation about all things architecture. Super entertaining podcast with a healthy dose of humor by my three friends, Cormac Phelan, Neil Pan, and Evan Troxell. When you head on over there, let them know you heard about it on Business of Architecture. Today we're going to talk about the architect registration examination and some other cool stuff. In today's episode, you'll discover how to create passive income by sharing the knowledge that you already have as an architect or intern or designer. Three tips for passing the architect registration examination, in case you're working on that. And our guest's number one tip for getting started as a blogger. Today, we're joined again by Michael Rusica, a young architect and the founder and blogger at youngarchitect.com. Michael Rusica, welcome back to Business of Architecture. Thanks. Thanks for having me. You bet. It's on, yeah, it's only been like five minutes since we last spoke. But yeah. <laughs> if you're a listener to the show for a while, you know that I, I like to break it up by theme into two separate segments. So, Michael, you've had some something big. It just happened, and we're talking to you at a good time. You do run the the website Young Architect, which is a great mm-hmm. blog for immersion professionals talking about your experience as a young architect, uh, as someone who's going through the area, as someone who's getting licensed and charting out a path for your future. Tell us about what's happened in the past month or two in terms of your career. Fill us in on what's going on. Yeah, let me actually, I'm going to back up a little bit. I want to talk about Young Architect for a second. So um, in 2013, actually it was around the end of, I started taking the architect's exam in 2009. And uh, I ended up putting it on hold for about two years because I was um, busy. The office was getting slow and um, things were happening. I took a I failed the structures exam. It was going to take a couple of months off and it turned into two years. It just got, it got away from me really. And so, uh, at the end of 2012, I, um, I was kind of running out of time. ARE gives you five years to take them all. And I was plugging in at that time. There was a six month rule. If you failed an exam, you had to wait six months before you could retake it. And so I was running out of time. And so at the end of 2012, I said, I got to jump back on this architect's exam thing. And so I geared up and I took structures and I basically the whole year of 2013, I took four architect's exams and I wrapped it up and I finished and I got my license the end of December of 2013. Um, While I was working, I kept having this moment when I was studying um, and during 2013, I said, you know, if I... I got to get this architect exam done. Um, If I was building a business or working on another project with the amount of time, money, and energy I've put into taking this architect exam, I would be a lot wealthier, a a lot more successful in another area. Um, And so as the light started to get near the the end of the tunnel, I started thinking about what am I going to do after these exams are over? And um, I've always been in love with the internet since I was a kid. Um, I love... I'm just, I've always been fascinated with how Google works and how people communicate. Um, and so I kind of decided I want to learn how to blog after, after the exam was over. And I wasn't quite sure what that looked like yet. Uh, I started writing, um, the internet was a lot different from the, I wrote two blogs when I bicycled across the United States and the internet was, had changed a lot since then. And so I started um, just blogging under my own name, and I wasn't really sure where it was all going. And then um, I wrapped up the exams, and then it was January, about a month or two after I had my license. I'd been blogging, kind of not 
kind of not really sure the, what I was doing with it, but for a couple of months. And one day I was reading um, Mark LePage's blog, Entrepreneur Architect, and I was looking at all the different, he calls it the blog role, all the different blogs. And I kept clicking on all the different links, seeing all the different types of architecture blogs. And I just had this moment where I said, I want to write a blog for young architects, for architecture students, for people taking the exam, for young professionals. Um, that's the world that I've lived in for such a long time. And I feel like I've got a ton of knowledge around um, how to be successful in those areas. And so I kind of took off. And so uh, I looked up youngarchitect.com. It was super expensive. They wanted like $1,000 for it. And so I started youngarchitect.org and then um, started creating this Young Architect blog. And I wrote, I, wrote a couple of AR, I wrote a couple of posts about the architect's exam and kind of my experiences with test taking, some things I learned. And then one day I sat down and said, I'm going to write a review on every book I ever, ever used for the architect exam. Um, that hadn't really been done. NCARB gives, gives you a list of books, and I've looked at all of them. And it's really hard to figure out this is a good book or this book's not that great. Um, I also had used a lot of resources that no one ever knew about, books that people had never heard of to study for the architect exam. And so I started sharing that information more. Um, and ironically, every time I spoke about the ARE, these posts would go viral. They were getting shared on social media, on other websites. Um, Google started sending me Google traffic on it. Um, and as Young Architects started to pick up momentum, one day I just said, uh, I got my tax return. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to spend that $1,000. And I bought youngarchitect.com. I said, I'm, I'm going all in. And um, I never thought I was going to become an authority on the architect exam. But the more I talked about it, the more of a, I kept getting a very large response from it. Uh, I wrote a post called... Um, failing the architecture registration exam. And I talked about how I failed four different times. And um, two of them were silly, but two of them were pretty legit. I just hadn't studied enough. And um, how I didn't really think that, you know, failing, I didn't really fail anything. Um, Terminology is not right. It's, I just didn't pass. It's, um, I just didn't have enough to, to get through. And then I kind of talked about how I think, you know, maybe failing would have looked like for me, using those not passing scores as a way not as to as a, as a way to stop me from getting my license and i talked about coming back after you failed and that just went went crazy no one had really talked about that topic before and it was kind of a soft spot in everyone's heart um so i just kept talking about it and then eventually uh last spring last what was it last fall i said i'm going to write a book about the architect exam and for 6 months i the winters in Portland are super cold and wet. And so I like to use that time to really kind of hunker down and focus on a project. And so that was kind of my big project last, um, last winter was I wrote this book called how to pass the architecture registration exam. And, um, I got it out the door in, in spring and I've been selling it through my own website. I thought about putting it on Amazon, um, and selling it on Amazon. But at the end of the day, I realized that I had so many people coming to me from Google searches. And I already had the audience, the young architect audience. I'm just going to self put it out and put it out through my own website. I don't need to share the cut with Amazon to take advantage of their search engine. Um, and so, yeah, I've just been working on this young architect thing. I'm super passionate about it. And, um, and then it's been doing pretty good. Um, as soon as I got my license as an architect, I started moonlighting. I got teamed up with a builder who's a residential builder. And first pro big project I did for him was his own house. Um, we did a lot of design. It was a lot of schematic design. But then once we really nailed down the design, I pretty much got it, gave him a builder set. And there's not too many details, kind of just enough information to get a building permit. And we hired a structural engineer. Um, but yeah, I've really, I built a really good relationship with this one builder and he's been keeping me busy. And um, so between the young architect and the builder thing about, uh, I don't know, for the past couple of months, I've just been, well, for the past three years, I've been working for the city full time and then doing all of my side projects kind of in my, on my nights, weekends and vacations. I've pretty much been working around the clock. Um, and I've kind of gotten to the point where it's really, I'm, 
I'm not living in one of, I'm living between two worlds and I'm not fully a part of either of them. Um, and so I've kind of decided about, um, I decided several months ago, it was kind of time for me to step away from the city job and kind of transition into to the next phase for me. When you started selling, tell me about selling your, your ebook on the ARE. Um, tell me about that process. How did, the, how did the sales start out? How did the sales, how are the sales now? They're kind of all over the map. Um, some months it does really well and some months it doesn't do so good. Um, but I don't know, they're bouncing around and I'm constantly refining it and retuning it and updating it and changing it. Um, getting this, this was really my first product. It was the first book I ever wrote, first thing I've ever put out to sell. Um, I hung on to it for a long time before I released it. But now that it's out, I'm constantly fine tuning it and tweaking it. And for me, it was uh, just get it out the door um, and you can always update it later. And that was kind of the beauty of having a digital product to sell. Um, but yeah, I'm selling it through my own website. I'm about to build a new um, sales page for it. Um, the reviews are pretty good. It's a downloadable PDF. Um, you find it through the website. But um, I'm getting ready to have uh, hard copies printed for Christmas time. And then um, I'm going to record it as an audiobook in my own voice, me reading my own writing. Um, and so I've just been kind of getting started with that as well. Very cool. And when you say some months it does good and some months it does bad, how much is good and how much is bad? Mm, I think I sold 200 copies of it one month. Um, how actually, much, that's how not, much you sell it for? That's not true. That's not true. I take that back. <laughs> 200 copies. I think I did a... Um, no, I did about a hundred copies one month, and then I did two hundred copies or twenty copies the following month, and then it was up between eighty. So it's kind of just bouncing all over the map um, as far as sales go. And then one thing I've been working on recently was I wrote this, the How to Pass the Architecture Registration Exam. I've written about twenty, thirty blog posts about the ARA. I've decided to take the book that I wrote and turn it into a program. Um, I've created a 10 week program where we essentially take that book and put everything I wrote in action and um, I'm calling it the ARE bootcamp. And so what I'm doing is I've created, it's kind of a virtual study group. I'm taking five people. I'm using the CDs exam, the construction documents and services. And um, we're all, as a group, we're all going to over the course of 10 weeks study for that, that program. It's kind of an accountability group as well. Um, I have a lot of hacks and tricks and things I had learned over the course of 11 exams and we're going to try them out all out and see which ones work and which ones don't. And, um, my goal is really to, to, to take people, set them up for success on their first exam. And so after this first exam's done, they know what they need to do to re finish the remaining, uh, exams to, to get their license. And so, um, I filled my first group. And we're starting next week and I'm starting to um, take signups for another group that I'm going to begin in early November. Sounds, sounds like a great service. So if people want to find out how to sign up for that, where do they go? Just go to youngarchitect.com. Um, all this information is on the top of the sidebar and you can see the, the link for the ARE bootcamp and how to pass the architecture registration exam. Book. Okay. So this concept of publishing may be new to some of our listeners, maybe not so new to others. I just want to put a little note in here, a parenthetical note, uh, a great book called Rework by uh, a firm formerly known as 37 Signals. I think they might have changed their name, but they're the, they're, they start out as a graphic design firm and they have moved over into software development. Anyways, one of the points of this book is that as people who are involved in a profession, we produce side products of everything we do on a daily basis. So for instance, when you study the ARE exam, the side product that you have is your knowledge of how to pass the ARE exam. So that's mm -hmm. like sitting up here in your head. So the idea is that what knowledge do you have? And I'm speaking to our listeners here. What knowledge do you have that you could potentially sell or create a product out of like Michael's done here? I think it's an excellent example of what he did here with his knowledge. You know, he could have just said, okay, that was great. I checked it off. I did that. Now I'm a licensed architect. He decided to take that side product, so to speak, create a book. And now 
He's selling it for $25. It's a great resource on his blog. As he said, if he sold 100 copies in a month, that's $2,500. And you know, some months it does that, some months it does a lot less. But you're making a difference, Michael, and I imagine you're having fun at the same time. Yeah, it's great. Having a great time. Great. So, so check out that book. Uh, if if you're not already an Audible subscriber. You can, if you want to, you can support Business of Architecture by going to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash book. You can download a free audio copy of Rework and check out what I'm talking about there. So that's enough shameless promotion for now. So Michael, that kind of brings us up to date now with where you're at with uh, the blog that's turned into, you know, it's really on its way to turning into a business and then you have your architecture as well. So you're, you're no longer working for the city. What's, what's next? Um, the immediate moment I'm going to be building, kind of focusing on this ARE boot camp, and um, I'm launching this as the first one. But uh, my goal is to do a couple of these and really iron it out. Um, maybe this turns into uh, an online video course, or I'm not quite sure where it's going to go. Uh, kind of my my uh, my intention is to jump in the trenches and figure it out as I go. Um, so we got the the ARE boot camp starting up. I'm going to be focusing on that. And then um, kind of in the immediate moment, I'm just going to be really focusing on Young Architect. I want to create a lot more content um, over the next couple of months. I've been posting once a week. I'm thinking about um, as my schedule opens up and I'm about to have a whole bunch of free time uh, posting every day for the month of November and just doing a blast of new content. Um, I'm going to be that's that that project gets me really excited. Um, I like to write. I like to share information. So um, I think I'll be working on that. But in the future, I'd like to kind of travel around more, um, meet more young architects. Um, I'm thinking about starting a podcast soon. I'm still kind of wor working that that out. Um, I'm thinking about traveling around the country a little bit and maybe doing a young architect meetup. But um, one big project I have out there is um, next summer, I think I'm going to do another bicycle ride across the United States. And I'm still kind of figuring out what that looks like or how it, how it plays out. But that's another big project I'm going to be working on. I'm going to build another bicycle. I'm going to build a bike touring blog site um, similar to Young Architect, but kind of in a different, completely different realm. And uh, I'm going to be focusing on that. But my plan as of the moment is to go to the AIA convention in Philadelphia next May. And then after then, I would probably go down to Virginia a couple days after that's over and start cycling back to Oregon. Ah, impressive. <laughs> that always sounded like something that would be really fun to do. I'm a bicyclist cyclist myself, and it just sounds like a blast. So you've, you've done it twice, and you're, you're a glutton for punishment. You're ready to go for it again, yeah. huh? It's addictive. You just get being out there on a bicycle in the middle of the country. You just meet some really amazing people who you would have never crossed paths with if you were in a car or any other way of transportation. So, um, and it's just really beautiful seeing the landscape unfold and change every single day. It's kind of like a series of like, I don't know, we did 90 days the last trip, 90 beautiful days of cycling back to back. Um, it's really, it's a really beautiful experience. So. Yeah, it sounds incredible. Well, Michael, what would you say to people who are thinking about starting to blog or to get their ideas out there? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I recently ran on a rant about this. Um, it's easy to say I started an architecture blog and it's doing really well. It's earning some money. Um, but at the end of the day, part of the success of my blog all of the success of my blog is the fact that I love, I love working on it. I'm pretty passionate about it. Um, the idea of being a full-time blogger um, isn't, it's, it's kind of an easy thing to do, but at the end of the day, it's a really hard, um, it's really hard making money off of these things and getting traffic. The first year of blogging is, they call it the sandbox. When you start a new website, Google doesn't even acknowledge you for the first six months. Um, until you start to show that you've got traffic and people coming to you. Um, if someone wants to start a blog, I would recommend using a service like WordPress.com. There are so many backend tools. Um, it can, it can very quickly get complicated. And at the end of the day, the most important thing, it's the content that you put out. Um, 
focus on creating good content first. Um, the second thing I think would be to find your audience, understanding who you're blogging for and get that in front of them. And it took me, it took me until I figured this whole young architect tech thing clicked into place. I wasn't sure who I was or what I was writing about or how it was all going to unfold. But for me, it was at that time, it was about just getting my feet wet. Um, but getting traffic to your site is one of the biggest things. And I love social media, luckily. And so I spend a lot of time um, hanging out, chit-chatting and um, talking to the people who um, read my blog, who other blog, there's other bloggers I connect with. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I think blogs, everyone, I've heard so many people say, just start a blog. It's easy. Um, and ha now having a successful blog, it's actually been a lot of work. I've been obsessed with it. I've been obsessed with this, this blog, Young Architect thing. And um, it's been, been the right path for me. But unless you really like writing, um, it's, um, it's not the right path for everyone, per se. So are you going to, what's, what's the future for you in architecture? Do you see yourself leaving architecture? No, not at all. Um, I see myself taking a step back right now. Um, I've been doing projects for a very, very long time. And <clears throat> right now I'm kind of in a moment where this young architect thing is doing really well. Um, if I, I've always been struggling to find more time to work on it. Um, I'm going to step away from doing projects. Um, at the moment, I mean, I always have one or two going on. Um, there's people that know to call me when something comes up. And so, um, but I must say though, starting an, an architecture practice and chasing more aggressive work aggressive in this moment in time um, isn't my immediate goal. It might, it will probably be that in a year from now. Um, Probably when I get back from my bike trip, I will be starting my own practice and kind of taking that more seriously. But in the meantime, I'm going to be really be focusing on young architect and kind of pushing that harder. Yep. Based on your past experience, what kind of projects would you want to be working on? In a firm? Um, I have a lot of knowledge around this government stuff. And so um, I could see myself chasing after government projects and um, kind of going after those things. Having done all that complicated government work for so long, doing a residential remodel is uh, feels really good, and um, it's just a different set of challenges. Um, and so, kind of, you know, dabbling in that world's been super fun too. But um, I've always worked in small firms and always kind of had a, a, my hand in a bunch of different pots as far as residential, commercial, institutional work goes. So I, I would probably see myself kind of dabbling with a little bit of all that stuff. Excellent. Well, everyone listening, go check out youngarchitect.com. Connect with Mike, Michael Rasika. Michael, how can they connect with you? What's the best platform in terms of connecting? We're talking Facebook, Twitter, the blog, all the above. Yeah, I use uh, Instagram and Twitter. I'm the most um, in front of the uh, – so I, my, my name is Young Architects PDX, Y-O-U-N-G – TX PDX on both Twitter and Instagram. Excellent. Well, Michael Rasika, keep us informed about how things are going. Thanks for sharing with us about the Young Architect blog and that site, that resource. Before we let you go here, give a couple pointers. What are your top two or three pointers for interns or you know soon to be architects that are facing that ARE exam? Um, set up a schedule. Um, I wrote a fantastic blog post about kind of the hypothetical schedule that I would use. Um, studying for the ARE for me was more of, it was very similar to training for a marathon. It's a lot of small bites and consistent bites at it and keep kind of focusing on that. But having a good schedule that you're following and looking at dates and times. And if I start studying now, I'll be ready around this time of the year. How does that play out with my personal life? Um, what's going on? Um, kind of looking inward and um kind of uh, and the schedule at the same time super important um as far as the second thing i think studying trying different techniques um just sitting there reading isn't always the best most effective way to study the are um you're essentially being tested on how you answer the question so if you're just reading 
text all the time, that's input. If you don't practice how to answer the question as an output, um, you could be wasting your time. Um, so one thing I always recommend is practice questions are worth their weight in gold as far as this, uh, the architect's exam. Uh, NCARB's got a way of wording questions that people that speak English as a second language um, often get, they fumble and get confused. And um, so I always recommend that um, practice questions um, are just gold and just even just studying the art of asking a question. Um, what is a more understanding how multiple choice questions work outside of the area realm is super helpful. And then a third, um, let me think for a second. I guess finding a community or people. Um, there's people online. There's a bunch of forums. NCARB's got a great forum that they've been creating. Um, my AIA had classes and people, and so I would connect with other people in those classes, but and then other classmates of mine. But I was constantly looking for other people who were going through this process alone. Um, the ARE is a self-guided process, and it's drastically different than architecture school. Architecture school, there was a lot of camaraderie, and everyone's moving through this these programs and on the same schedule. Whereas here you're on your own, you got these books and you set up these test dates on your own. Um, it can be really lonely. And so just having other people that you're communicating with and even just knowing that they're studying is super helpful. Great. Michael Rasika is the founder and blogger at youngarchitect.com. You can go over there to connect with him. Michael, it's been great having you on the business of architecture. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's an honor. I've been listening to this for a long time. Yeah, hopefully you'll join the ranks of uh, podcasters here sometime soon when you decide it's right. But I'm sure you'll have a, a loyal fan base already. Keep up the good work. Thanks for having me, Enoch. And that's a wrap for another show about the business of architecture. To get more resources about how you, as an architect, can run a rewarding business that is both fun, flexible, and profitable, visit businessofarchitecture.com and click the Join button to claim your free account to Business of Architecture Insider. As a member, you'll have access to free tools and resources to help you get more clients, start a new firm, and much more. You'll also get access to my book, Social Media for Architects, where you'll learn how to use internet tools for fun and for profit. Until next week, this has been The Business of Architecture. views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment except to help you conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5, Do It Anyway.